Hollywood stars. Exactly. Exactly. And then we ended up with the Phillies for a short period of time. Oh, did he? Yeah. Exactly. He was very nice to my dad and I saw him out in California when he was playing with oh, sorry? Hollywood. Yeah. Okay, we have a bonus here. <laughs> the biggest name out of Jamestown since Ruben Fenton, who is now Stan Lundin, the baseball fan <laughs> involved in baseball. And it started, just to give you the background, what got my interest in Stan Lundin is, from a baseball perspective is that uh, they had a reunion down at the ballpark uh, last June. Danny Carnavale was there. And he came up and said, whatever happened to that Lundin kid? You know, wasn't he a lieutenant governor? He had that kind of raspy yeah, voice. Sure. And he, he came up and asked me, and I told him, you know, what was going on, what had happened to you, and that you, you know, Congress and all this other stuff. But he was extremely interested. Oh, well, that kid was around the park all the time. So with that, and we're doing a little bit of history of professional baseball in Jamestown, how did Stan, and I bet your dad got you involved in the process? Well, my dad was a ball player. He didn't uh, play professional, but he played semi-pro ball in this area, and uh, he actually went and uh, went to spring training with the Chicago Cubs one year, uh, and and had a, a pro he was a shortstop and had a problem, uh, threw out his arm or something and and came home. But uh, they were always fans, and from my earliest recollection, we went down to now College Stadium, then called Municipal Stadium. Um, basically, I remember the games right after the war, uh, and, and it used to be tremendous crowds, of course. They were uh, the Jamestown Falcons, and they were a Detroit farm team. And um, it was before television, and minor league baseball was really a big deal. Um, we. Uh, Danny Carnavelli first managed the Bradford team in that league, and uh, they had some kind of a playoff. I don't remember the specific system, but after the regular season, they'd have a playoff. We went to Bradford, and uh, of course, I was just a kid, just a fan then. Uh, I think the time that I first got to meet him was uh, when he then, I think this was in the early 50s actually, came to Jamestown to manage. And we went to their first game, which was an away game, and there was no bat boy. And so my dad said, well, Stan can serve as a <laughs> bat boy. <laughs> so that's uh, how I first uh, met him. They had a team there in the 50s that was phenomenal. I mean, they won the league by 20 games or something like that. Uh, and he was always a great, actually with Bradford, he was a playing manager. He was a shortstop. And uh, uh, they, he, he was always a great baseball man. And his recollection of me was a little bit updated because I did run into him <laughs> in Buffalo when, he, when I was lieutenant governor. Sure. But, um, it, baseball was really a great pastime here in Jamestown, and um, you know a lot of the minor league pet players uh, that came stayed here and were became a great part of this community, and some went on. It, it was a lot longer shot in those days because there were more divisions in the minor league to get and fewer major league teams too mm -hmm. to get to the majors, but. Um, one of the things that I remember is that uh, when I was in the fourth grade, my father uh, decided we're going to take an automobile trip to California, and uh, we took a couple months off school and just traveled by car around the United States, and we saw Johnny O'Neill, who had played here when he was playing for the Hollywood Stars. I think they were actually just in training, that, and but he was very nice to us. and. Uh, I think we still have photographs of me with a Hollywood star's <laughs> cap on and so on. That was owned by the entertainers themselves, weren't they? I don't know. Uh, it was a, a, a very advanced AAA Pacific Coast League. Of course, that was long before Los Angeles or San Francisco had major league teams. And uh, they were, I mean, there were several AAA, the International League, of course, Montreal then was the Dodgers farm team, and 
uh, Buffalo and, and so on. But I, I had the impression that the Pacific Coast League might have been even a notch above mm -hmm. the international and just below the quality of the major leagues. So your bat boy, did you continue that, or you just no? Just I did no. I just did it for that one game, and I, I would it was a great thing that I would do with my grandfather uh, in the summers uh, when I was oh from from three until I got involved in in summer activities. Maybe a teenager. Um, I lived up at their cottage at my grandparents' cottage at Colburn's, just the side of Bemis Point. And uh, Grandpa would take me to the ball games almost every night, um, and it was a great thing that he and I did together. Um, we would we would root for those Jamestown Falcons, and it was it was very exciting.